What's up guys? I'm Vikraman. In the past few episodes, I discussed about the convolutional operators, the basics and the properties. In this uh, lecture, I'm going to continue talking about convolution, but I'm going to narrow down my focus to one by one convolution. So what exactly is a one by one convolution? It's just the same convolutional operation, but with a filter size of one by one. It's really small, but it's extremely powerful that it is one of the fundamental blocks of ResNet and uh, Inception module that are built by uh, Microsoft T and uh, Google team respectively. And uh, it is also widely used in uh, other problems like uh, fully convolutional neural networks for semantic segmentation problems. So in this lecture, let's uh, get started with uh, the basic uh, properties and uh, advantages and uh, where you can use it in your own problem. So let's get started. This is a one by one convolutional filter. Both uh, the dimensions are one by one. And uh, it was uh, first introduced in a popular research paper called uh, Network and Network. Let's look into some of the key aspects about one by one convolution. First off, it uh, reduces the number of parameters to a great extent. If you have a lot of parameters, then you are prone to overfitting. By reducing the number of parameters, it inherently reduces overfitting. To give an example, let's say we have a 5x5 filter and a 1x1 filter. The 1x1 convolutional filter reduces the number of parameters by 1 by 25 times. So the next uh, important uh, feature about uh, uh, one by one convolution is uh, feature pooling. Uh, just give me a moment, I'll come back to this in a while. And uh, the most important aspect about uh, one by one convolution and the reason it's widely used is it in, uh, increases or decreases the, num the dimension of the number of feature maps. Uh, it basically plays around with the dimension D. So if you have, uh, let's say, a 3x3 filter or a 5x5 convolution filter and uh, convolve with uh, the input tensor, you will uh, like most probably likely to have a modified version of the dimensions of height and width of the tensor. But the depth uh, dimension D will be untouched. The key uh, aspect about a uh, one by one convolution is it uh, modifies uh, the dimension of D. So now let's uh, look uh, one by one convolution in action. Let's see the working of a one by one convolutional filter. Uh, in this example, uh, this is our input tensor. Uh, this is our filter and uh, this is the produced output. Note that the filter dimensions is one by one, but uh, the depth dimensions matches with the input uh, dimension of the tensor. Okay, so uh, the first step is it uh, a one by one uh, filter convolves with a cuboid in the input tensor that is of uh, dimension one by one and uh, with D and uh, it produces a single uh, output in an output tensor. The key point to notice it also acts as a feature pooling. How? Because uh, you, our uh, input tensor interacts with D uh, input uh, uh, inputs and uh, produces a single output. So it's similar to the pooling uh, function that we have seen earlier. For example, let's uh, look into max pooling. Uh, let's say this is an input and uh, this is a max uh, pooling filter 2 by 2 and uh, this particular uh, operation produces a single output in uh, output tensor. Likewise, uh, if you look into one by one convolution, uh, it operates across uh, D uh, input uh, inputs and uh, produces a single output in the output channel. So it uh, in this way, it acts as a feature pooling in the channel dimension. If you look closely, matrix multiplication and one by one convolution can be expressed in terms of each other. So let's look into an example. Uh, let's take two vectors W and X and just for namesake, let's call them a weight vector and input vector. Uh, let's do the matrix multiplication first. So the result would be uh, the product of the weight vector we multiplied with the corresponding input vector and the sum over all the examples. So here it's n. So 
Now let's look into how a uh, one by one convolutional vector operates in a similar vector. So this is our tensor, input tensor, and this is our uh, cuboid input, uh, the block which we are convolving. So uh, this would uh, would be let's say uh, x1, x1, x2 up to xn, okay, and it's it would be xd here. Pardon me for the fault. And uh, this one would be w1, w2 up to wn. And uh, while convolving these two, uh, it would again be uh, the sum of w1, x1, and uh, this would uh, result in this uh, output point in uh, output tensor, which is nothing but the same as uh, w sum of uh, w i x i. So matrix multiplication is also can be easily expressed as one by con one convolution and vice versa. Just a word of thought. Uh, uh, one of the heroes of uh, deep learning and uh, pioneer of uh, convolutional networks, Jan Lee Kahn, once stated that in convolutional neural nets, there's no such thing as fully connected layers. There are only convolutional layers with one by one uh, convolutional kernels and the fully connection tables. So if you take uh, fully connected layers, they are uh, basically a uh, product of matrix multiplications and uh, you can easily replace them as uh, one by one convolutions as we just saw. So as he say, states, uh, in that scenario, the fully connected layers uh, really act as one by one convolutions. Let's look into some of the examples where one by one convolution is used. First, let's look into inception module where one by one uh, convolution plays a very crucial role. I'm not going to really talk much about what an inception module is, but uh, to give you an idea, it uh, fuses uh, uh, different types of filters like 1x1, 3x5, 5x5 and uh, max pooling layer. So naturally, the number of parameters shoots up. In order to combat this, the researchers at Google used a 1x1 convolution to uh, reduce the dimensions uh, before uh, feeding into these uh, convolutional filters. So let's say we have a previous layer. It's first uh, passed down to a one, one, one by one convolution to reduce the number of dimensions, which is uh, then uh, fed into a three by three convolution or a five by five convolution, and then the outputs are fused. So here, uh, one by one uh, convolution is uh, very crucial and uh, saves the day. One another area where uh, is a uh, one by one uh, convolutions are uh, used is in case of uh, FCNs and uh, ResNets and uh, in basically it's called skip connections in skip connection what happens is a uh, layer in the initial uh, stages kinds of adds with the layer in the later stages so in order to add our uh, two tensors we need to match all the dimensions of the tensors so uh, it's not just uh, sufficient uh, to match the height and width it's also uh, crucial to match the dimensions of the channel so in order to match the number of channels uh, our one by one convolution uh, comes to rescue and uh, uh, let's say in this example uh, the tensor from layer 3 is uh, fused with the tensor from layer 7 so what happens is uh, the tensor from layer 3 is first uh, uh, fed into a one by one convolution uh, to match the number of uh, dimensions in uh, z direction and uh, then these two layers are fused. One another area where uh, one by one convolutions are widely used is in case of the final layer of semantic segmentation algorithms. Basically in the prediction layer the output uh, has a dimensions so or similar to that of an image so you have a height width and uh, n is generally the number of classes in that particular data set so uh, in order to modify the channel dimension to match with uh, that of the number of classes a one by one convolution is used i hope uh, you found this uh, lecture useful if you have any doubts uh, feel free to comment below thank you for watching